Right, West is dealer. Nobody vulnerable. West has got uh, 14 points in total. A completely balanced hand. 4 3 3 3 is extremely balanced. Uh, playing the Akol system, which is what we play in Britain, um, we would open 1 no trump with 12 to 14 points. If you were playing a standard American system, you open one no trump with 15 to 17. But of course, given that we're playing Akol because we're, we're in Britain, we would be, uh, we'd be opening one no trump with this hand. Now to North. Well, North's bit's not very difficult. North has uh, one point, five four four. Um, absolutely nowhere near enough to bid over one no trump. You need kind of 10 plus, that kind of region, or a, a good shape. We have got a good shape, but we haven't got um, anywhere near enough points or suit quality. This is a nice, easy pass. Now to East. Well, uh, East has got 10, 20, 20 points in total. Um, very rare will you have 20 points and your partner opens the bidding in front of you. Immediately you should be thinking of a slam as soon as that happens because they've got 12 to 14, we've got 20, so we've got at least 32 points between the two hands. Um, the only downside is that our hand is extremely balanced, 4 3 3 3, and our partner's hand is also balanced. So, a balanced hand opposite a balanced hand, you need a lot of points to make a slam because you haven't got any of the shape to be, uh, to be making tricks, extra tricks by, by length. Um, so, here we've got 20 points. Our partner's got between 12 to 14. Um, you could bid stamen and look for a spade fit. You bid two clubs. If they bid two spades, good, we've got a spade fit. However, we have 4 3 3 3. So, that would suggest. Even if we have a spade fit, actually we want to play no trumps anyway because we're so balanced. So you can actually suppress this spade suit if you want to and not bother with stamen because you're so balanced. If you were 4-4-3-2, four, four, I would use stamen because you want to use that doubleton to rough in. With here, we've got no roughing value. So even if spades are trumps, our hand is not going to rough anything. So I actually think we should just bid the appropriate number of no trumps. Three no trumps is definitely not enough. We've got 20, they've got at least 12, so we've got 32 as a minimum number of points. To make a slam in six no trumps, you need 33. There's a little rhyme for that, 33 for 6 NT. So 33 for 6 NT is almost met. There's 12 there as a minimum, and we've got 20, so that's 32. Um, so we could take an optimistic view or you know, be hopeful that our partner has 13 or 14. We bid six no trumps and hope that they've either got 12 and they can play their way out of trouble or they've got 13 or 14 and can make 12 tricks nice and easy. Uh, however, there is a bid that actually this hand fits perfectly and that's something known as quantitative four no trumps. Whenever your partner bids no trumps, if you bid four no trumps directly over their no trump bid, it is not Blackwood or Roman key card version of Blackwood. It's actually a direct ask about whether they want to be in six no trumps or not. So similar to the way two no trumps, if you bid two no trumps, that would say bid three no trumps if you're maximum, pass if you're minimum. Four no trumps works the exact same way with a slight difference of it says bid six no trumps if you're maximum, pass if you're minimum. So it's the exact same idea, it's an invitational bid, it's not invitational to game, it's invitational to slam. It's called the quantitative four no trumps because it's interested in the quantity of points that this hand has. So quantitative four no trumps is good on this hand because if our partner's maximum they'll bid six no trumps, which means we'll have 34 or a good 33. If our partner's minimum, i.e. 12, they'll pass four no trumps and they should be able to make it. Very important you recognise when this is quantitative and not asking for aces. Because if this were Blackwood, we, our partner should never pass. But because it's directly after a no trump bid, we use this for quantitative. If we're interested in asking for aces, we would have to do a transfer or stamen or something first and then bid four no trumps. So in this instance, this says bid six no trumps if you maximum, pass if you minimum. Now to South. Strongly suspect South will be passing. Uh, yep, yeah. uh, South's got a balanced hand, only five points. Uh, obviously nothing to say over four no trumps, probably nothing to say over one no trump, to be honest. So yep, yeah, nice and easy, straightforward pass. So, our partner's bid quantitative four no trumps. It's a direct question, are you minimum or maximum? If you're maximum, have a go at small slam. If you're minimum, pass. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We have 14 points, which is the maximum for our 12 to 14 point range. So we're going to bid six no trumps. Our partner's asked us a question, we'll give them the answer. It's important we recognise this isn't asking for aces. If this was asking for aces, we'd of course reply with however many aces we have, in this case one. Um, but after no trumps, four no trumps should be quantitative, so we're going to bid six no trumps. So leading against six no trumps, um, never really a nice, thing, nice position to be in because you, you desperately don't want to give a trick away. 
Uh, as it happens, our hand is extremely poor, so it's unlikely we're going to be giving a trick away, because whatever we lead is unlikely to help the declarer. Um, to be honest, I can't see a reason why we should verge away from fourth card down of our longest and strongest, although I don't expect us to be able to establish the diamonds as tricks. It's just likely that the opponents won't want to play diamonds themselves, because they have fewer diamonds than everything else, based on what we can see. So I would lead a small diamond here, fourth down, uh, simply because I don't know what else to do. I wouldn't lead the jack, because to lead against no trumps you need three in a sequence. So the jack promising the ten would also promise the nine against no trumps only. Um, if we were against a trump slam, I would lead the jack of diamonds. Because we're against a no trump slam, I'm going to lead fourth card down. Alright, down goes the dummy. Best dummy you'll see in a while. We've got 20 points. Right, so in a no trump contract, uh, we want to look at our top tricks and then look at our extra tricks. That's the same principle, even though we're in six no trumps, it's the same thing. We want to look for our top tricks and see if we have any extras. Uh, so top tricks from left to right in our hand, we have three clubs, ace, king, queen. Jack 10 is wasted, unfortunately. Three diamonds, ace, king, queen, that's six. We've got two spades, the ace, king. So that's now uh, eight tricks in total. And we have one heart, the ace, so that's nine top tricks. Uh, so three no trumps would have been easy. Uh, we're in six, so we need three more tricks. Uh, looking for our extra tricks, there are two suits our extra tricks can, can come from. They're not clubs and diamonds, because we've got three tricks in clubs and three tricks in diamonds. So they're sewn up, we can't get any more out of those. It's spades and hearts where we might get extra tricks. Spades, we might get extra tricks based on length. If the opponent's spades are breaking three and two, we'll be able to set up a length winner here. Also, we might be able to finesse in spades, play a low spade to the jack, hoping the queen is on our right. We might be able to make four tricks in spades if the queen is on our right and the spades are breaking 3-2. Also, we've got a, a finesse position in hearts. We're missing the king of hearts, but if we play a low heart to the queen, that might win if the king of hearts is on our right. And in fact, we might be able to make all three heart tricks if we lead the jack and then finesse to the queen um, and hope the king is on our right. Of course, the ten of hearts becomes important then because if it goes jack, king, ace... The Queen of Hearts, the Ten of Hearts, will be a winner for the opponent somewhere, unless it falls. So, regarding losers, it looks like we're going to lose maybe one heart, maybe one spade. So, we, it's a bit of a tale of two finesses this hand. We need the spade finesse to succeed, and we need the heart finesse to succeed. Even though we've got so many points, we've got arguably a surplus of points, the problem we've got is something known as mirrored shape. Our hands are identical in shape, so we have no length suit to go at. We've got no tricks because of no long suit. If we had, you know, let's say a fourth club here and only two clubs here, we'd have four club tricks, but we've got three opposite three, so we've only got three club tricks. So we're going to need the spades breaking and the spade finesse to work, or the spade finesse and the heart finesse to work. It would be even better if we had the ten of hearts, because then we would have just a heart finesse for three tricks and a spade finesse for three tricks there. Um, so actually we need some good fortune to make this six no trumps. We need the spades coming in and the hearts coming in. We can only afford one loser. It's likely we'll lose to the ten of hearts or maybe the queen of spades. Of course if the heart finesse and the spade finesse fails, we're definitely off. So yeah, we're going to have to do some playing here. Um, before doing the spade finesse, I would cash the ace of spades just in case it's singleton queen of spades somewhere. That helps you just in case that's the layout. Uh, if you don't see the queen of spades, of course, you'd then be finessing the spades. So I'm going to look to play the spades first because they're our longest suit between the two hands and then we're going to have to fall back on the heart finesse at a later stage. Obviously on this opening diamond I'm going to win one of the diamonds and then look to play the spades. So for now I'll play any one of the three diamonds, I'll play the queen, but any one of the three will do. So queen of diamonds one on the dummy, this hand plays low, we play low. We're now going to tackle the spades, we're going to take the spade finesse but first we're going to cash the ace of spades just to learn a bit of information about the spades. The queen of spades might drop singleton, you never know. So play the ace of spades. This hand plays low spade, obviously, and we're going to play low, and we get the dreadful news that the spades are 5-0. This hand discards something, let's say a club. Their hand's basically useless, don't worry about this hand really, but they're going to discard a club most likely, keeping their hearts protected. Um, so they play a low club, and we get that's dreadful. That's really bad news, because that means the spades are all here, so the spades are not breaking. At least the queen of spades is in the right position, though. We play a low spade to the jack. That will win a trick, because we know the spade finesse will work. But the spades are not breaking now, which is bad. We also know, based on the spades we have in, uh, in our hand and the dummy, we know that this hand also has the ten of spades. So what we would like to do is play the nine of spades and finesse them for the ten and the queen all in one job. Now, you wouldn't normally do this, but it's because you know there are no spades on your left. So you, this is known as a marked finesse. The finesse will work. The reason it'll work is because you know categorically this hand has queen, ten, seven, and another spade. They must have, because they have to have, because this hand has none of them. So you lead the nine of spades. 
If this hand plays low, which is the incorrect defense, you can then play low, knowing the nine of spades will win the trick. The correct defense is to cover with the ten. And I'll explain why in a minute. The ten of spades forces us to play the jack. Okay, we have to win the jack. The jack will win, of course, because the queen is on our right. They discard another club. But now you can see that this hand on our right, the defender with all the spades, has got our spades covered. If we play the eight, they play the queen, we play the king, and their seven is a winner. If we had the seven of spades instead of the six of spades, we could trap their queen with the eight and remain our seven as a winner. So unfortunately, this is going to come down to the seven and six of spades. We get the lead to the dummy, we lead the eight, they play the queen, kill the king, and we're going to lose a spade. If instead we play low, they play the seven, forcing us to play the king. So we actually can't win. We're going to lose a spade. That means we need to not lose a heart. The diamonds and clubs are sewn up, so we need to not lose a heart. There are two ways we avoid losing a heart trick. We lead the jack of hearts, and it goes low, 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 and the finesse works, and then we play a low heart to the queen, which works. Um, or we play the jack of hearts, it goes jack, king, ace, and then the queen fells the ten, making the nine our, our winner. If the king of hearts is on our left, we are off, because we can't avoid a spade loser based on the spades there, what's happening in the spades. So we need the king of hearts on our right, and we need some help from the defenders. Either they don't play the king on the jack, or the ten of hearts is falling. So we're in hand, having just won the jack of spades. I cross back to the dummy in any suit you like, basically a minor suit. Uh, let's say a club to the queen. Doesn't matter what. We need the lead in the dummy, that's why we're overtaking this club. Uh, they throw a low club. And now, we want to lead the hearts from the table. We need to avoid heart losers. We have a definite spade loser. So when we lead the jack of hearts, we're trying to take a heart finesse. Now this hand here, you can see the king of hearts is in the correct hand as far as declare is concerned. If the king of hearts is there, we're off, so we don't need to worry about that. This hand here, with the king of hearts, should play the king on the jack. You should cover an honour with an honour. If you play low, this hand will play low. Well, in fact, I'll just show you what happens. If this hand plays low, with the mentality of, I don't want to play my king because they will ace it, although that's true, your king will then be falling under nothing. So by playing the king on the jack, you're at least killing something. If you do play low, which is the incorrect defence, this hand plays low, this hand plays low, and now you can see, with that heart, heart trick having gone, the ace-queen of hearts is now sat over the king of hearts. So declarer will make those two clubs, those two diamonds, that one spade, and those two hearts, and will simply lose this spade here. So they'll make their contract. So the correct defence is instead to cover an honour with an honour. You must kill that jack with your king. Yes, you know it's going to die to the ace, but you need your partner to have the queen or the ten, hopefully. So it goes jack, king, ace, like so, and a low heart. That's the correct defence. And now you can see this hand's ten of hearts is going to be a real pain. We have an option in hearts. We could play a low heart to the nine, finessing for the ten here, or we could play a low heart to the queen, or cash the queen of hearts, hoping the ten falls. Our best chance now is to finesse for the ten of hearts. The queen of hearts falling the ten is very unlikely. So again, we'll cross to dummy, let's say with a diamond this time. As so, they play their last diamond. But now you can see, because the defender covered the jack of hearts with the king, we're going to end up losing to the ten of hearts and losing to this spade. We play a low heart, they play a low heart. Our best chance is to finesse for the ten. So you play the nine, but unfortunately for you, the ten of hearts is in the wrong hand. The ten of hearts gets won. Your other alternative was to play the queen, in which case they'd have played low, and you would have lost the nine of hearts later. So it doesn't matter what you do as it happens, but the nine of hearts finesse is the best chance. When they win the ten of hearts, you've lost your one and only trick you're allowed to lose, and you have a guaranteed spade loser. It is inevitable losing a spade as long as this defender plays properly. So, the next three, the three minor tricks are irrelevant, this heart trick is also irrelevant, these spades are the problem, and what you can see is this queen seven is trapping the eight on the table. So we're going to end up losing a spade, all this defender has to do is keep hold of the queen seven of spades, and we have to lose a spade. This hand will exit something, it doesn't matter what, and we'll end up losing a spade. So we're going to end up going off in this slam. We have 34 points between the two hands, but we simply didn't have the correct shape or the finesses didn't work. Well, the finesses did work, but the ten of hearts finesse didn't work, so we couldn't make our 12 tricks.